All right, we're gonna keep con we're gonna keep cross examining this dude. This dude is a moron. He has a cool suit, but he's a moron. He's sweating. Look at him. Disgusting. Here in the time. Let's do this. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. What? That made no sense. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Oh yeah, bad A. Hearing the time. Let's see this crap. Okay. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Okay. Yeah, the murder it was the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Um, that's not a clock. That must have been what I saw. Okay, I I found it. This guy's a moron. Is this really the game? The third one, the third and the first case in the third one was a lot, lot harder. Uh, okay, yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. You're a freaking idiot. Look at this. What do you expect from this? Objection. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Huh? You, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mrs. Owit. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? That was that's a clock. Your Honor, uh, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes! Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known that the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hands. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah. Prove it. Prove it. I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were all the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and shook the... And the shock of the blow triggered the voice's clock. That was the sound you heard. Gavel. Or in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. See, it was him. See, I told you. I told you. Mr. Sweet. The sound you must have heard left quite an impression on you. Hmm, interesting. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Okay. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> but the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That, that day... I... I never... I... Look... I... The clock... I... Uh, no... I mean... I saw... I saw... <laughs> Okay. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you! I saw him! He killed her! He should burn! Burn! Give him death! Gobble, 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 gobble. Gavel. Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, I, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright? Your Honor? You claim the sound of the witness heard that came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? whole case is riding on this. I better think through it carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound of the Mistress of Wit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock, duh. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, 
Can you tell me what the time it is now? It's 11.25. Ack! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the depress discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit? Try talk- Oh my gosh, this guy is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot one thing? Uh oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proved nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? You can't prove that. You don't have a case. He's right. How am I supposed to. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright? Seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Ugh. Yes, your honor. This means I cannot let you in indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Frank Sweet. I've come, I come all the way to here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal. These lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Damn. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. That's it, really? Not so fast, Mrs. Owit! Mia! I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow that day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time doubting your facts. The facts assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have the proof. And you'll have your proof. The blackout, my friends. Right. Miss, right, Mr. Right? Can you think of a reason that the clock was three hours slow? Yes, ma'am! Wait! Maybe I can't prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove that can prove it, but right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court uh, court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence prove why the clock was running slow. Guess what? That's right. Uh, you know why? Because it was from noon to six. But Actually, hold on. I don't know. <laughs> Let me think this through. Okay. We have to prove that the clock was slow on that day. So basically, he was saying 1 o'clock from noon to 6. Six. The other report. Ah! Wait a minute. Okay. 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Yes, I know. And then it went from noon to four. It's four hours, that's not three though. Right on the day of the murder. I'm pretty sure it's this because, you know, the thinker said one o'clock. And like, maybe the clock stopped in the blackout. I'm gonna do it. Objection! It's not it. Um, excuse me, this proves your claim. Oh. I can't see what that evidence has to do with this clock. No, oh, that wasn't it. One more chance. Give me just one more chance. All right, Mr. Wright, but this time is not on your side. Be quick about it. Let's let's see this evidence that proves uh, the clock was running slow. Oh, whoops. Okay. So I, what? That wasn't it. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. It's rather heavy. It's heavy. Hmm. Huh. Okay. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30. From the other mer- She went to Paris. That's right. It's not a three hour difference from Paris, is it? She went to- She was in Paris. She's used to the time in Paris. Ha <laughs> ha! That's not it. That is it. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As all we know, as we all know, the time and difference between Paris is nine hours. 
When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. and the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. Oh my goodness, I'm such a genius. That's why the time that's why the time you heard when you struck her her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sowit. Or should I say Mr. Did it? Oh my goodness, he's foaming at the mouth. <laughs> what the heck? Gavel, gavel, gavel. Order. Order, I say. Wow, we did it. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than I we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find your and find the two true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Woohoo! 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 Where are the party poppers? Where are the party poppers? Let's just have a party. And with that, the court is adjourned. That was sick. <laughs> Uh, it turns out Frank Sewitt was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see where the people were out at, at the house. That day, okay, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sewitt let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sewitt grabbed the nearest blunt object and he could find and struck her dead. Aw, oh, poor girl. Man. I feel bad for her now. Well, not only is she dead, she's a fictional character. Oh well. Yes, we... Phew! I still can't believe we won. Right! Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've been on the trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chiefs looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry! You're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, uh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait. No. I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah. Never mind. Congratulations, Harry! Harry? Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts Innocent! <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh no! I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got off the hook. Got you off the hook, sorry. Oh hey! Here! Take this! It's a present! A present? For me? Wait! Wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Cool, I like Mia. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that, don't that wanna make you, don't that make you just wanna cry? Larry. Hmm. Are you sure? Excuse me? I think she, she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not, not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? <laughs> They're gonna be doing that a lot in this game, I feel like. Right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? The statue? I don't know. Oh, uh, I guess this? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? 
This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Well, hope that made him feel better. A little better. Cool. Is that it? Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we, all we can do is believe in them. And in the order to believe them, in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. I like Mia. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, uh, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry. You were just... Wait, isn't it Larry, though? You were saying... Oh, I think I get the joke now. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, uh, yeah. Part, at least. You have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Aha! He's got a honey. He's got a honey. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me, unless you count the clock he gave to Mia. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Wait, what? Uh... Vas? Vas are you talking about? I don't get it. Vas are you talking about? A brand new episode has been added. Cool. First turnabout, episode one. Second turnabout, sisters. Cool. Oh, this is probably when Maya comes in. Cool. Sisters. I know about Maya because I play Mo Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And uh, Phoenix Wright, you know, always has Maya with him and crap like that. This is probably when Maya comes in. Probably Mia's sister. Makes sense. Makes sense. I saw Mia in the third one. That was awesome. In the third game, Mia, uh, Mia was in the third game protecting Phoenix Wright. Anyways, that's for when I play it, but it's cool. I like Mia a lot. I really like her, but let's do this. Uh, tune in next time for the next case, guys.